Welcome to video 23. This is a follow-on to video 22 where I demonstrated in C language how to create a user-defined type using typedef. The user-defined type that I created was a date object. So let's look at that code. So on line 3 through 7 you see the definition or declaration of the structure called date that has a month, day, and year field. On line nine, you can see the type def struct date date type, which invents a new type called date underscore type. And on line 13, you can see I create a variable today of date type. Now, to demonstrate how C++ has changed the meaning of struct in C++, I'm going to remove line 9 and get rid of the type def. I'm going to change line 11 to read struct date today. I'll go ahead and compile date.c and run it. And we can see that it runs just fine. Now what I want to do is I'm going to copy date.c to date.cpp and I'll edit date.cpp and we're going to compile this using the C++ compiler. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say clang plus plus date.cpp and it compiles just fine. It's backward compatible with C. But now watch this change that I make. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to delete the struct keyword on line 11 so that now I have today as a variable of type date. And I'll compile it and it worked. Hmm, that's very interesting. So in C that doesn't work, but in C++ it does work. Well, struct has cleverly been uh, updated to be backward compatible to older C code, uh, so as not to break older programs. But there's a new keyword called class. And so I'm going to put class in place of struct. And notice that at line 11, today is a variable now of type class. So that's really where we've just instantiated an object of class date and we've called it today. And so now I will try and compile this, and all of a sudden I get errors, because I changed struct to class. And what I see is M, D, and Y are private members of date. So that's emanating from line 12. Well, a private member, this is a new concept. So a class can have private members and public members. And so by default, in class, M, D, and Y are private. So I put in my public label at line 4. And now I'll try to recompile this. Let me clear the screen. And it works. Now I still get the same output. But the difference is I now have what are called data members, M, D, and Y, are data members of class date, and they have public visibility so that down here on line 13, when I refer to um, today.y, today.d, today.m, I have visibility into those data members that are part of class date and that are instantiated in this variable called today. Now I can create other variables of that of this type. So for instance, if I want to have another date variable called yesterday and another date variable called tomorrow. So all three of those are instantiations of class date, but they all have their own variables. They're separate. 
And so whereas class date, this is the blueprint in lines three through eight, line 12, 13, and 14 are instantiations of three separate objects that are made up of this same pattern. Now this probably doesn't look all that great because it's, a, it's not much different than just having a structure, but now we can also bind functions as members to the date class. And so every time we instantiate an object, we're gonna get data members and we're gonna get functions. So I could create a function called display my date, which would um, issue a printf. And I'll say percent 2d slash percent 2d slash percent 4d. And I'm going to use these internal variables. So month, day, year. So now this is uh, on line eight, th lines eight through 11, this is a function that is part of class date. And so it's a member function. And we have a name for that, um, member functions are called methods. So it's just another name for function, but when you hear somebody say method, you should understand that it is attached to an object uh, and it's defined in a class. All right, so let's give this a shot and see if this works. So at line 20, by line 25, we have initialized the variables in today uh, or the member data in today to say 5321, even though that's not a valid date. So how would we actually call the function display my date? Well, we, we call it by saying today dot display my date. And we say this is, uh, we send a message to today. Okay, so that compiled and we run it and sure enough, you can see that the it's got a slightly different look to it because I didn't actually put in the leading zeros. I could do that right here. And let's see if it comes out the same. And here I'll say display my date. So we can see that it was actually called from that function. Okay, so that's an example of the difference between struct in C and struct in C++. It's an example of the difference between struct in C++ and class in C++, where a struct, you have a default public members and in class you have default private members and you actually have to make them public. And the big, the real big one is that you in a class can have mem data members and you can have function members, right? Member data, another way to say that. Member functions, another way to say that. And member functions are called methods. All right, I will continue this line of of uh, reasoning and development in the next video 24, where I show you how to make a special member function called a constructor, which finally gets us to our solution uh, that we posed uh, back in video 22, the problem of forgetting to initialize an object or a variable.